Hello and welcome to Science Monitor, your favorite weekly news program on science, technology, invention and innovation. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. In today's episode, we'll talk about ISRO's first successful SSLV launch. We'll also tell you about the recently announced National Awards for Science and Technology Communication 2022. There'll be lots more news, but let's begin with the headlines. Another achievement for ISRO with the successful launch of SSLV D2. Three miniature satellites, including one from Space Kids India, placed in low Earth orbits. National Award for Science and Technology Communication 2022 announced these awards will be given on the occasion of National Science Day for the excellent efforts in science communication. Second Young Scientist Conclave of Shanghai Cooperation Organization held in Bengaluru. Young scientists from member countries along with officials from science ministries and departments participated. And information about the latest activities around the world related to science and technology in the special segment Science Express. And now the news in detail. ISRO has added another chapter to its achievements. On February 10, 2023, ISRO successfully launched its new small satellite launch vehicle that is SSLV D2. The launch placed three satellites in low Earth orbit, including one built by Space Kids India. A Science Monitor report on this success of ISRO. 10th February 2023. Location Satish Dhawan Space Center of ISRO at Sriharikota. ISRO ready to write a new chapter at the first launch site of the center. The countdown began and ISRO's new small satellite launch vehicle SSLV D2 took off at 9.18 am Indian Standard Time. And in the next 15 minutes, this vehicle successfully installed three satellites in the lower orbits of the Earth. With this launch, India got a new launch vehicle. So congratulations to the space community of India. So we have a new launch vehicle, small satellite launch vehicle SSLV. In its second attempt today, SSLV D2 has placed the EOS-07 satellite in its intended orbit very accurately. Along with the EOS-07, two more satellites were also placed in the required orbit, Janus-1 by, through NSIL and from the Antares, and Asadisat through InSpace, uh, by the, realized by the space kids. So congratulations to all three satellite teams for making uh, the satellites as well as placing in the right orbit and I wish all the very best to the rest of the operations of the satellite for accomplishing their mission goals. Probably all of you are aware that SSLV had its maiden flight, SSLV D1 and we had a narrow miss of placing the satellite in the orbit because of a shortfall in velocity and I'm very happy to report that we have analyzed the problems faced in the SSLV D1, identify the corrective actions, implemented in a very fast pace, qualified all of those new systems, went through large amount of simulations and studies to ensure that the vehicle will become success this time. And I'm very happy to see that the really intended model of the vehicle has been executed in reality in flight. The satellites carried by SSLV D2 included one 153.6 kg Earth Observation Satellite EOS-07 developed and built by ISRO, a technology demonstration satellite Janus-1 of American company Antares weighing 10.2 kg and one 8.8 kg mini satellite Azadisat-2 developed by 750 girl students from India under Space Kids India. SSLV is a new small satellite launch vehicle developed by ISRO to launch small satellites up to 500 kg into low earth orbits based on launch on demand. Earlier, on 7th of August 2022, 
SSLV D1 in its maiden developmental flight had narrowly missed installing the satellites. It's a proud occasion for ISRO that we have now a new launch vehicle to be offered to the launch vehicle community. It all began in 2018, a journey which started in 2018 had reached its intended destination today. The journey which has traversed through its nascent phase of configuration, realization, fabrication, testing, analysis, and finally it even had to overcome the COVID phase. It reached the launch pad last year and we had the maiden flight in August, 7th August. As mentioned by Chairman, we had a small anomaly observed in that and we couldn't put the satellites in the intended orbit. But detailed analysis further by a number of teams was carried out and we were able to pinpoint the problem in the system and we had to overcome that and I would I would like to say that we overcame that. EVO is 07 satellite. It's really unique in terms of the requirement to the completion of satellite and handing over to vehicle. All happened in a so fast track mode. Within four to five months, we have realized the complete thing. In fact, uh, the requirements has come as early as September 22, uh, where the ongoing mission was already going on, but the teams were common to both. Still, we have assimilated all the configuration essentials required and we were looking for best of the payloads to, to make an opportunity to fly in this mission. In this way, this is India's first success in the field of small satellite launch vehicle. And now ISRO is ready to meet the growing global need to launch small satellites into space. The vehicle provides low-cost access to space, short turnaround time, the ability to accommodate multiple satellites and requires minimal launch infrastructure. This achievement by ISRO is in line with India's decision to open up the space sector to the private sector and further strengthening Indian space startups. The national awards for science and technology communication have been announced for the year 2022. Under these awards given in six categories, this time seven individuals and one institute have been selected in various science communication fields. These awards of different categories will be given on the occasion of National Science Day on 28th of February. A Science Monitor report. The national awards in the field of science and technology communication are conferred every year by the National Council for Science and Technology Communication, Department of Science and Technology. The objective of the awards is to recognize and encourage the efforts made towards the popularization of science through various media channels. The names of the awardees of the National Awards for Science and Technology Communication for the year 2022 were announced recently. These national awards are given in six different categories. This year, the award for the first category, National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Science and Technology Communication in general, is being given to the Karnataka Science and Technology Academy, Bengaluru. The award in the second category, that is, the National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Science and Technology Communication through print media including books and magazines has been given to Prof. Maya Dharswan from Bhubaneswar and Dr. Biju Dharmapalan from Thiruvananthapuram. In the third category, that is, National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Science and Technology Popularization Among Children has also been jointly awarded this time to Dr. Krishna Rao Appasani of Hyderabad and Dr. Uday Kumar Kakadu of New Delhi. In the fourth category, National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Translation of Popular Science and Technology Literature in Languages mentioned in the 8th Schedule of the Constitution of India and in English, Tarun Kumar Jain of Jaipur has backed the award. The fifth category of the awards, National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Science and Technology Communication through Innovative and Traditional Methods is being given to Anjan Banik of Agartala. 
this year's national award for outstanding efforts in science and technology communication through electronic media has been conferred to delhi based rakesh andania the national awards are presented on national science day on february 28th to honor individuals and institutions who have made a deep mark in the field of science and technology communication the awards carry a citation and a memento along with an incentive amount of 5 lakh rupees for the first category and 2 lakh rupees each for the other five categories this initiative by the department of science and technology not only recognizes the efforts towards science popularization but also encourages new people to work in this direction the second young scientist conclave of the shanghai cooperation organization or sco was organized in bengaluru during the conclave young scientists from member countries along with the officials of indian science ministries and departments and representatives of various nations gathered on one platform the conclave was inaugurated by dr jitendra singh union minister of science and technology and earth sciences who emphasized on mutual cooperation in the field of science technology technology and innovation a science monitor report on this conclave the world constantly faces new challenges forcing the need for collective innovative solutions keeping this in mind the shanghai cooperation organization conceptualized the young scientists conclave the event provides young scientists from all member countries a platform to share innovative ideas related to various challenges in various fields the second sco young scientists conclave was organized in bengaluru from 6th to 10th of february 2023 the five day conclave was inaugurated by dr jitendra singh union minister for science and technology and earth sciences government of india representatives experts and scientists associated with the ministries and departments of science technology and innovation of all member nations were present at the conclave in his address the union minister said that collaboration of young minds in the field of science technology and innovation will further strengthen the sco first of all i congratulate all the young scientists who have got the unique opportunity to participate in this second sco young scientists conclave and for that i must also thank all the sco member states for their support cooperation and nominating the candidates for this event i am glad to note that all these themes have been included in the conclave program that i have gone through the discussions and deliberations among the sco young scientists i'm sure will provide new perspectives and expect them to come up with a road map to address all these challenges that i have enumerated in the last few moments the growth of sco depends on its success in the areas of science the area of technology in the area of innovation and therefore there's a need to transform this entire landscape the motto for the young scientists as i see it should be to innovate to patent to produce and thus to prosper india looks forward to deepening the sco collaboration in the field of science technology and innovation i am confident that this conclave will foster the collaboration among young scientists i wish the conclave a grand success the five day conclave saw young scientists from various member countries present their research papers on their innovations and innovative ideas during various sessions experts discussed the current challenges that world is facing and the possible solutions for them India has close cultural and historical ties with all SCO nations and such a conclave will further strengthen ties and increase cooperation in the field of science technology and innovation SCO lays special focus on all areas related to the ease of living including alternative energy resources environmental protection availability of drinking water agricultural production biodiversity health education and data analysis no one owns this planet we are only custodians and as a custodian our job to protect the property has been given to you and pass on to the next generation i do believe that 
these young scientist conclaves bring the like-minded country friends together, interact, share the knowledge, wealth, and see that how the science, what we develop, is not restricted to one institute or one city or one country. Science has no boundaries. I believe science is has no boundaries not only within the planet, it is also planetless. We are able to see into Mars, we are able to see into Moon, and we know what's happening on the Mars. So science has taken us beyond the boundaries of the planet. So we have to talk of interplanetary connectivities now. Science needs to be shared, technologies need to be shared, and wealth has to be shared. Planet belongs to all of us. I do believe that the friends who have discussed for the last five days on various themes certainly have chosen the right problems. And as my colleague Arvind mentioned in the beginning, we are very happy to give joint calls across the member nations and see how you are connected forever. The second young scientist conclave has proved that there are a lot of talented people, a lot of talented youth people with many, many innovative ideas, very, which are very, very interesting and which they can really um, bring to our everyday life. Uh, so it was amazing to listen to all of you, uh, to listen, listen how you speak about uh, your current researches. Uh, and um, uh, it's very interesting to share different projects from the different parts of our world. Uh, but inside of, uh, despite of this fact, we are still united by common passion for science. India has made good progress in recent years in terms of its overall performance and outcome in the field of science and technology. Our country is now ranked third globally in terms of the number of scientific publications and also at the third spot as far as the number of startups is concerned. With startups mushrooming at a rapid pace, India can guide other member countries through the SCO Young Scientists Conclave. And now let's take a look at some of the latest developments around the world related to science and technology in our special segment, Science Express. The Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Jitendra Singh, has informed Parliament that 22 nuclear power reactors are currently working in the country. The Union Minister shared this information during question hour of Parliament. He said for the first time in the year 2017, the Union Cabinet had approved 10 indigenous reactors under Atmanbhar Bharat with an outlay of 1,5,000 crore rupees. While the annual generation from nuclear plants was only 35,333 million units till the year 2013-14, the annual generation has increased by 12,000 million units in the last eight years. Earlier, most of India's nuclear installations were limited to South Indian states or the western states of Maharashtra and Gujarat, but now they are being expanded to other parts of the country as well. The world's first thorium-based nuclear plant, Bhavani, using uranium-233 is being set up at Kalpakkam in Tamil Nadu, which will be a completely indigenous and first-of-its-kind plant. Researchers at the Indian Institute of Technology, Mandi, have developed an artificial structural material that can help stealth vehicles and covert installations remain invisible to radars. This material can absorb radar signals from whatever direction it hits the target. It can also be used to cover the windows or glass panels in stealth vehicles and critical installations that need to remain invisible to the radar. During tests, this technology was successful in absorbing more than 90% of the radar waves in a wide range of frequencies. Radar is used for surveillance, detection, navigation and tracking of aircraft, ships, vehicles and covert installations. Keeping military equipment invisible to radars is an important defense strategy. In such a situation, this achievement of Indian researchers can make India stronger in the defense sector. Apart from the defense sector, this technology can also be used in the commercial sector to reduce radiation leakage from buildings, making them more secure. The DAV United Festival titled Celebrating Unity was recently organized at the Indira Gandhi Indoor Stadium in New Delhi. 
Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh, who attended the event as the chief guest, said the National Education Policy NEP 2020 is in line with India's growth in the world and complements the startup ecosystem in the country, which provides livelihood opportunities to the youth. The minister promised that DAV institutions would find a place in their Ministry of Science and Technology mentorship program and students would be encouraged to take advantage of young scientists' scholarship schemes and opportunities for children in the Atal Tinkering Lab. He said the institutes should rethink their courses and include emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, geospatial and space applications, and drone technology which would help in making the next generation more capable and lead the country. Argentina's Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Daniel Filmish, who visited India in the first week of February, met Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences Government of India. The two ministers discussed ways to facilitate entrepreneurs in Argentina. Speaking on the occasion, Dr. Jitendra Singh said, the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research would be very keen to engage with Argentinian industries and work towards the implementation of technologies, products, processes in Latin American countries with government support. He said that CSIR is one of the global leaders in R&D and has the inherent strength to provide scientific and technological expertise in development through effective international collaboration. It is noteworthy that CSIR and the National Council of Scientific and Technological Research of Argentina signed a cooperation agreement in the year 1985, which was renewed in 2009. This bilateral cooperation will help both the countries in developing a partnership in new areas as well. Briefing Parliament on the rapidly growing space sector, the Union Minister for Science and Technology, Earth Sciences and Space, Dr. Jitendra Singh said, that significant changes had taken place since the implementation of the policy of opening up the space sector by the Government of India and InSpace has so far received applications from 135 NGOs. The Government of India is also working on bringing out a revised FDI policy and a national space policy to facilitate foreign investment in the space sector. Responding to a question on startups in the space sector, Dr. Jitendra Singh said a new seed fund scheme has been approved by the InSpace Board to provide seed funding to Indian space startups. On the question of details of total imports and exports made in the space technology-based industry in the country, the statement said that during the financial year 2021-22, Rs. 2114 crore was generated to execute various projects and programs. An amount of Rs. 174.90 crore was generated by launch services, data sales and in-orbit support services during this period. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Keep sending your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is indiascience at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at vigyanprasar, A50, Sector 62, Noida, 201, 309, Uttar Pradesh. So we'll take your leave now. See you again next week. Till then, stay safe and think scientifically. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.